I'm Hannah from Bedrock, um, and I'm excited to introduce uh, an effort our team is exploring to supercharge the ways we are able to move data around our networks. First of all, I want to help folks understand what we have today. Um, you've probably heard of uh, the words BitSwap and GraphSync. I want to talk briefly about what they are and how they're different. Both of these protocols move IPLD data around LibP2P networks. The analogy I've been using to help non-programmers understand is this. BitSwap is roughly designed like BitTorrent, while GraphSync is roughly designed by, uh, like HTTP. That means they shine best in different scenarios. BitSwap, like BitTorrent, is good for moving highly distributed content from many peers where each individual peer might have low bandwidth, like a home computer. GraphSync, like HTTP, functions great for downloading data from high bandwidth servers like storage providers. Um, the other big difference between the protocols is a historical artifact of how they were built. Um, BitSwap is the bread and butter of IPFS, while GraphSync was written in the course of Filecoin development. This has led to some big difference in the implementations we produce. These aren't differences that are inherent to the protocol, but they're nonetheless quite significant. GoGraphSync supports layers for payments and authorization, while GoBitSwap Go keeps everything free. And not only that, but GoGraphSync provides multiple layers of control to our operators, while GoBitSwap has very little, has a lot less configurability. This has led uh, in newer situations to a kind of a difficult trade-off. Um, we are starting to see in like retrieval markets, um, it would be nice to be able to reach to e for either protocol without having to think about what is and isn't supported in terms of things like payments and authorizations. It's a tough trade-off right now. Retrieval markets, for example, needs multi-peer transfers, but also they're going to need payments eventually. What do they use? Right. And this is what Project Thunder is trying to answer. The why not both? <laughs> um, we want to make each project protocol more powerful and flexible. So it isn't really a choice. I shouldn't have to say if I build for Filecoin, I use GrassLink. If I build for IPFS, I'm kind of stuck on BitSwap. Or if I use BitSwap, I can't use have payments. The auto retrieve project you'll hear about next is great for bridging IPFS and Filecoin, but in a long term, one shouldn't need to run a server to translate transfer protocols. And it's not just about making these choices easier. We can actually use one protocol to fill in the gaps with the other. BitSwap lags behind BitTorrent in performance sometimes because BitTorrent starts with more information at the start about the structure of data you're downloading. So what if GraphSync could be used to quickly discover that information? How much faster could BitSwap be? These are the kinds of questions we're aiming to answer. So anyway, how are we gonna do all this? Um, well, this is what you're going to get for the five minute version. Uh, no, seriously, I tried to make like a super simple architectural guide and no matter how much I cut it down, the answer will be unsatisfactory unless I'm taking the other geek dives uh, time and I'm not going to do that. That's not what you do to teammates. Suffice to say, it's complicated. In terms of what we're doing right now, um, uh, we have two protocols and several layers of payments that only work with GrassSync. In our current work, uh, Bedrock is re-architecting the higher level layers to be full, fully protocol neutral, while IPFS stewards are building the hooks in BitSwap to make it possible to support payments. This is complicated, slow work, but you will see, hopefully, a grow uh, re-architected GoData transfer V2, um, in, it says in a month or so, but I just heard two weeks. So in two weeks, it will be here. But here's a ton of more information. Um, you can read the detailed project proposal and roadmap. It proposed extensions to Dick BitSwap. Watch a video on how we're re-architecting Go Data Transfer. And you can also follow progress at hashtag data transfer in interop on Phil Slack. Um, and you can check the slides to dig into these. I might maybe do a, a, a like a, a deeper dive for programmers at some point. One last thing. Um, we may not get this work done super slow soon. Protocol, these kinds of protocol changes are really hard. They're always hard every time we do them. Um, they're long-term investments and they don't always have super visible win like immediate wins, but they have very big long-term wins. So our team, it's possible we may need to get reallocated at some point for immediate priorities, but my hope is we're gonna get there and that we're gonna invest as an organization in this kind of low-level work to unlock these key long-term benefits for our network. That's all. <laughs>